How to integrate suppliers with retailers. Let's do a little simulation together in our heads. Let's do a little exercise. Imagine that we have an online store. Imagine that we're retailers and we have a certain number of suppliers from whom we will get the actual goods in stock and the prices. How will we do this integration? If we look at it abstractly, and actually it should be abstract, we must have some kind of a repository. It doesn't matter how the repository is set up. Let's not teach our technical teams. I'm talking to managers and to product owners. Because when we take a scheme from any product owner, we usually see lots of technical terms in there. Why are we doing this? Why are we explaining how to implement the repository? What are they responsible for? We will need to do some more logging and we must have a certain way to do integrations. And all of this marked in green here is the responsibility area of an ESB. We must have a different interface for each supplier. Here we only have one interface, but it's obvious that each supplier must have its own interface. If we need an API because 10 suppliers want to contact us through an API, that's okay, that's an interface. And if some privileged supplier wants to send his files via email, that's also okay, that's an interface. And if someone wants to work through an online account, that's also okay there'll be another interface in the repository of the online store. Let's think about what will happen if we add another system, a PIM system, for example. We have a blue pen and a blue pen separated by an underscore. We know that both pens are blue and we need to create a master product. Keep in mind that during the PIM system integration, no other system will change. The online store will not change either if the integration is done properly. The PIM system will use the same repository. It will take goods and then return them to their appropriate groups. The eShop will then take that feature into its backlog only when the product owner decides to do so. It will only change at the integration level. Any developer understands that overall it'll be a very isolated and a very compact piece of code. In this case, we can have absolutely any online store. Our online store can be a cloud service or a marketplace. It can actually be anything, two online stores or even three, two PIM systems. Or we can replace the PIM system because from the point of view of organizational structure, the PIM system has a product owner who should be saying what this software solution is all about. Let's add a pricing service, it'll be the same. What's a pricing service? One supplier will send us a blue pen for 10 coins and the second one for 11, but we figure out that we need to find an average price. 10 and a half should be the correct price or 990. Okay, so we just add a new entity to the repository and the online store when it wants or when it is determined by the company's policies, depending on how this decision is made, will take it into its backlog. No other system will change. So what is the concept of an ESB? Who is responsible for the interface of the online store? Is it the ESB guys or those from the online store? The online store, of course. Now let's extrapolate. The online store is coded on 1C, the PIM system on 2C, and the pricing service on 3C. We have different platforms here, Java, Python, Golang. How can we subject them all to the same login rules from the point of view of technical support? We shouldn't forget that somewhere out there, in the perfect world, there should be a technical support service that would signal the problems. This is what the concept of an ESB is all about. An ESB provides us with a common interface. Most Western solutions are becoming iPass and no code because that solves architectural control problems when you need to do code review. For example, recently I saw a company from St. Petersburg where they had a Mule ESB that they completely transformed using their own code into something completely different. That wasn't a Mule ESB anymore. The whole organization thought that they had an ESB, but in fact they didn't. This can be very dangerous for code-first solutions. To avoid this, there must be some arm control, and iPass and no-code solutions solve this problem.